And welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, just talk about some of the fun things that we found going on in open source Linux, anything remotely related. I'm Ben. And that's Jill. And that's it. Hello. <laughs> if you were just, uh, just hanging around, sticking around, yeah. Yeah, Pedro said his goodbyes. He said, I'm done with both of you yahoos. I'm out. <laughs> I'm never doing it again. Oh. And he switched to Windows 11. No. <laughs> oh, that, I'm going to miss Pedro. <laughs> if you weren't around for uh, the live stream at the end of that, well, there's still Pedro to be in. Uh, yes. Scheduling absolutely. will work. It's, this is crunch time for Pedro on top of everything. Alex in like the middle of the week with his job. It's like, ah, I'm going to like install Windows 11. We don't want Pedro installing Windows. So <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> He's going to be taking a break, chilling out. We're going to be dialing this down to, if you've been around for a long time, you know this show started out as like, hey, it's a two-person show. We're going to bring a third mm -hmm. person in, rotate a minute out. Then we got lazy. Then we got a third person. We're like, you know what? Then the show just kind of blow it up, and it's another hour and a half <laughs> long show. So this is going to give us a chance to speed things back up a little bit, you know, to that original mm -hmm. tagline, like in and out in like 30 minutes instead of an hour and a half. But we'll still be around for a long time pre and post show because that's just how we like to do it spend time with the community but that's not always going to be the case because that's going to have a third person slot open for rotating people and you know if pedro does have a chance he wants to pop in jordan wants to pop in or somebody else San we'll bring sandy exactly. or even matthew matthew <laughs> let, let's let, let, let's <laughs> i mean oh <Aww>, straighter <laughs> we'd love to have you frenchy so yeah yeah that's that. Yeah. See, that's Strider. He was a uh, former Jill. Jill yeah. replaced Strider. <laughs> Scared him off. Yes. I, like, I didn't know what to do. Aww. Man, what have you been up to? We were talking in the pre-show about, um, cause I, I was just having a think I'm like, man, people mm -hmm. are acting very, very much not sane as of late. And I pulled up the calendar when we were talking I'm like, Oh, it's the middle of December. That'll do it. Yeah. And especially this year with shortages and yeah. So last minute shopping is not good this year. <laughs> Too many people do that and then they get frustrated and things happened in the stores. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been they, they fight over blue lights. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> Steve, Steve husband and I did our shopping early um, online and in the stores. We went to the mall about a, a month ago <laughs> And did what we needed to do, and then we were done. <laughs> Dude, I wanted to go check out the yeah. mall. Jill, you were talking up malls like last week, and I know that we have a mall laying around here somewhere because I've been to it. Yeah, <laughs> and I wanted to see a if it was still open, b if it was uh, looked like um, like some abandoned zombie set piece. But I forgot. Maybe I'll remember to do it next week. Anything else going on? Just getting ready oh, for the boy. holidays. So, yeah, just getting ready for the holidays and and looking forward to a short break and seeing family and friends because last year we were in lockdown, <laughs> so that was a little difficult. So that's really nice. And actually, Ven, I'm getting my booster shot today, right after the show. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I did it between between podcasting and my shows so that I wouldn't miss anything. <laughs> All right. Right on. <laughs> I've been playing around with a bunch of stuff, but before I even get into that from my brothers and sisters out there of a certain mm -hmm. age, we got to pour one out. We got to pour mm -hmm. one out. Arthur and one of our beautiful party patrons sent in a Aww. note, which I saw. We got to say goodbye to 3D now. And the Linux kernel. <laughs> because, yeah. uh, and I quote, instead of fixing this broken mess, simply take it out. Oh, now. Well, how I've never yeah. relied on thee for a singular thing. <laughs> we don't ever. miss that, no. really. <laughs> That's still a thing. I didn't go as far to figure out when, what, what was the last thing 3D now was support? So, like, had that instruction set floating around. I have to imagine modern Ryzen systems don't, but I guess maybe it does. I didn't look that far, but we don't yeah. have to worry about it anymore. I think Athlon did, but <laughs> I, don't, 
Well, yeah, I, I haven't looked. I haven't looked <laughs> on the on the newest Ryzen's. <laughs> they didn't put it on the packaging for the uh, Athlon 2s, not on the front. It might say okay. it on the back. And I was looking at the bulldozer on the shelf back there. It doesn't say, because that used to be a prominent okay. feature. Like 3D now. Yeah. Like, you know, we had MMX and 3D mm -hmm. now, and we were all sitting around going, 3D sucks, because this was before yeah. Voodoo came out, and 3D was bad. <laughs> we all had those case badges. <laughs> oh. I, I did not. I was a rebel, Jill. Oh, I okay. Didn't. I, I always liked all the case back the ba best badges. Would, <laughs> the best I'd do. Okay, I had a Superman AMD one where Superman was like pulling his shirt uh, off, and instead of adding the Superman, it just said AMD in the little case badge. Oh, yeah, those. yes. <laughs> but all the ones, like the even Very to this cool. day, the case badge stuff, like at best, I got I had a case for a long time that had a giant door and I'd stick them on the inside of that because I don't want people seeing. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the only badge I put on cases now are, are the Tex Penguin. <laughs> That's mm. what I do. <laughs> I have Nothing. to decorate it with Tex. Uh -uh. No. Mm -mm. <laughs> I, all I'll use is glitter. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bad idea, kids. Don't use glitter because if you do, you probably only do it once couple of things holiday shopping pro tip from your friendly neighborhood old man Vin. i noticed um i went to look for uh some aes cables now for the video mm. listeners i'm holding up they're they're kind of difficult to see basically these are they look like xlr cables you know for your microphone you plug them in you know three pins it's got male female in that's not what these are. These are basically the same thing, but they're digital. They're 110 ohm cables. I was on Amazon filling out some stuff, getting some cables and stuff for the studio. I'm like, okay, I need mm. two of those to test out a thing. Normally I use Ethernet cable, but this is for another adapter. They're like 60 bucks a piece on Amazon. Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> I on laughed. Amazon. Go laughed. to eBay. <laughs> don't, no, you don't. Do, <laughs> Apparently, the only thing AES EBU is used for in the consumer space is like wicked high end audiophile air quotes around receivers and stuff. You have people who will easily be separated from their money. And apparently, they have a lot yeah. to get rid of. Okay. So there's only a couple, of, you know, and they're like, oh, it's braided with extra non oxygen X2 technology, whatever. Maybe it's got 3D now in them. I don't know. Maybe that's what <laughs> Like happened. monster cables. The equivalent of that. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> after I was done having my good laugh. Listen, you've probably made positive life choices and you'll never encounter AES cabling in your life, but maybe you'll run across somebody who has. That's why I'm throwing this out. Go over to Mono Price and pay your $3 a piece for the cables. They're the same thing. Also, you know, DMX lighting cables, same thing. <laughs> yes. <But laughs> I do have an announcement. This is a game. This is a game that every young boy and girl might have encountered at some point in their life. Trackmania. It's a simple thing. Yay. It's Hot Wheels. You bounce around, you go loop-de-loop, -loop, and you try to get to the end, preferably with a rubber side facing down. Usually not the case. Uh, this is not the game that I'm setting up a server for. I'm setting up one for Trackmania 2. We did a bit of a load test week before last just to see. Load test is being generous. I wanted to see if I could set up map rotation, but I'm going to be setting up a Linux Gamecast Trackmania 2 Stadium server for us to play on and practice on every Friday. So that's your thing <laughs> this week. I'm going to be doing some performance profiling. So there's going to be 10 spots available. We're going to be running through. If you want something to practice, it's going to be the red tracks, the D series tracks. That's what we're going to run through just for testing. And it's for fun unless, well, you know what? It's all for fun. Long as you're in first place. Then it's great. You know, unless you're winning, no one's keeping score. But I invite everyone to hop in. I'll put the launch codes up. It works with Proton out of the box. You don't need anything special for it. It is silly cheap. This is the reason why I chose it. It's like six bucks. Mm -hmm. It will run on Intel integrated graphics. Another reason why I chose it. And it's just fun. Mm -hmm. You can pop in and play and try to set some times with us. And again, it's not serious racing when i say hot wheels racing i mean that in the purest sense you get in you play around if you want to get serious you want to get competitive fun. with it yeah you <laughs> can rest of us we're flying through the air on fire just like oh, this is neat yeah. <laughs> and uh 
I've been looking for something like that since, uh, you know, like Rocket League. We used to have that in the after shows and so yeah. we get a bunch of people in. This so is something, yeah, just get everybody together. If you want to hop in Discord, come talk with everyone. That's going to be completely optional. And, uh, yeah, I'll put an announcement up on Patreon and get the launch codes, the password. If you want to come watch it and we'll be streaming it live. But, yeah, that's that. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Arthur has his box copy. Yeah, this is this is not my box copy. This is the uh, I had my 3D glasses on earlier that this came with. This was the deluxe package. This thing was like 69 euro. Um, wow. <laughs> yeah. But 69 euros. How about 76 euros? Oh, yeah, even even higher. That's like 100 US. <laughs> it's even a new operating system sure. release. Yeah. <laughs> so this is really exciting news. Uh, the latest Ubuntu Linux based Pop OS 21.10 has been released with lots of new features and updates. In fact, yeah, a ton of new features. It now ships with Linux 5.15 kernel and the latest proprietary NVIDIA drivers. And that set, sets it apart from uh a classic Ubuntu, that it comes with the latest proprietary <laughs> NVIDIA drivers, which is awesome. And uh, uh, Pop! OS 21.10 Cosmic now has a smaller window for the app- application library, and it doesn't open, a, open up full screen like it used to, making it making for a much visually cleaner experience using the OS. I really appreciated that. I've been uh, uh, playing with the this latest um, release in a virtual machine and have had fun with it uh, and love all the new change changes, including this next one. Just in case you break something, there's another new progressive feature called Refresh OS, which has been introduced in what, Pop you OS just tried 21.10. To challenge me to break it better? <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. I have personally never broke Pop. <laughs> But it does happen, uh, like uh, Linus Sebastian <laughs> found out. So because of that, that's probably why we have this new feature. So Refresh OS gives you an option to reinstall the entire OS without deleting da- data from the home de- home folder, which is really, really convenient. So you don't have to work it, wor- worry about backing up your data before you do you know, reinstall. And oh, that's man. really nice. <laughs> I don't know. I mean... <laughs> couple of things. Uh, one thing we noticed yesterday when this rolled out was a collection of people complaining about 500 errors, not 500 individual errors, nay, but 500 yeah. errors in general. They couldn't get their downloads and uh, that eventually got fixed. They were able to switch over some something on the back end and get that out on Tuesday, which is good. Apparently by Tuesday evening, everyone was able to get all the pops that they wanted. Now, another thing in this announcement is the Pop Pie Tech Preview. And it's a preview mm-hmm. because System 76, like not a lot of love and attention in the QA department has went into this, but we want some people to go test it out. So if you got a chance to do that, I suggest it. And um, they made it a point to throw this in. They're now hosting mm-hmm. Pop! OS custom software repos That's from their awesome. own infrastructure. Or at least I think that was the idea until sometime yesterday when they went. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I think. That may have broke yesterday. <laughs> Do you think we could say so they, they pulled a Valve? Remember when Valve did yeah. the, uh, had the idea of like, hey, man, we're going to launch the uh, Steam Deck video live stream and it, pff, everything was on fire. Yes. Um, <laughs> maybe not a good idea to load test this on release day. But yeah. We were talking about that so earlier. I, I, <laughs> I, for years now, um, not even since I started getting everything set up in the studio, that has to be production ready. But even before that, even with Ubuntu, I always wait for a point release. Like that initial, it's like, you guys mm-hmm. get out there Same and have here. fun and tell me what's broke and I'll, I'll, I'll join you on the flip side. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know. Yeah. Man. So th- <laughs> this version, you know, has so much innovation. Oh, uh, not to mention there's a new arm build uh, for Pop! OS 2110 for the Raspberry Pi 4. Mm-hmm. And that is available to download. That's been much anticipated. That tech preview. So oh, it's going to be neat. Yeah. Now, one thing. It's awesome. Pop gets so right. Oh, always. Mm-hmm. Because once they started doing this, you know one, you might have an NVIDIA card. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. You might have an NVIDIA yeah. card. <laughs> and this has been a problem with, not even a problem. This has, for me, been a collective, like, why? Don't you just have this shipped, configured, and ready to go out of the box when you install the operating system? Yeah. I don't think twice about it. You know, I'm Debian, yeah. man. I got to enable everything and download it and compile, not compile, yeah. but install We're used the run to files. Installing. Yeah. Yeah. But for somebody mm-hmm. new out of the box, you know, Nuvo, man, that that's just to keep your fingers <laughs> crossed and hope you get through the graphical installer if you need it. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pop gets set right. Yeah, they should get credit for that. Having the accelerated drives Absolutely. are configured. Now, I don't know what the state is currently on Ubuntu with installing that, but I'm saying every, every distribution should at least have that as an option. And yeah. The only com- thing I've come like, well, NVIDIA mm-hmm. might be up if it, NVIDIA was upset. They'd probably set some button now. I'm just saying. Feel free to write me mm. some email and tell me how yeah. incredibly wrong I am because <laughs> yeah. I sure, sure <laughs> well might be. Now, Aww. <laughs> let's get in the holiday season I mean, with a little bit of Dracula. Ah, Dracula. <laughs> you know it. You love it. Yeah, really, you do. Because if you're anything like me, when you're shopping for themes, uh, you know, this isn't always, this has been around forever, but it's not really what you'd call a dark theme. It's that purple theme. It's better than the one that sears your retinas off. And what I didn't know, the reason I bring this up is they have their own website, which it's like, this is really neat, DraculaTheme.com. All this is going to be in the show notes because, you know, purple beats seared retinas. This is neat for me because it acts as app discovery. Like, what? What's yeah. this thing do? What's this thing do? And then you get your standard ones like Chrome. That's in there. But <laughs> there's yeah. other apps, you know, GDK <laughs> themes, wallpapers, Oracle SQL developed men who never wants that in their life. NetBeans, Eclipse, Console, Firefox, mm-hmm. Better Discord. I didn't even know that was. Well, okay, maybe I did. T- what's going on with Tmux? Um, yeah. That's a clown no like on that one. Qubit Torrent Alfred. Things I've never heard of. Now, a lot of this I have, but um, Wox. I don't know what Wox is. Yeah, that that one I don't know. <laughs> does it does it tell me what Wox? No. All right, live the, live your best life and download Wox and let me know what it is. <laughs> Get K, Facebook, Termox, MOBA X Term. Yeah. Yeah. Just go there and check that out. The uh, Oh, it's got Mutt. <laughs> it's got cool. Mutt. It's got Telegram. Yeah. <laughs> This is save yeah, your eyes, Adam. Because Emacs, <laughs> yeah, that yeah. that's a, uh, that's important. I don't like getting blinded, and I you know f- finally, finally on Android, you can just set a dark theme for everything, and pretty much all the apps do a good job of obeying. But that's like something I genuinely dislike. And with Chrome, you can set in mm-hmm. flags. They have a experimental dark mode which it works like 80% of the time, but I'll take the other 20% where it just doesn't work and live with that over just getting blinded, mm. try to watch things and just read websites. So I am very, very yeah. happy. Dracula's got its own little page that doubles as app discovery for open source projects. Yeah. It's like, that's kind of neat. You know, the, it is. And the theme actually reminds me of the uh, Twitter, the Twitter one I used, use not the black one, but the, the darker blue, mm. um, Twitter theme. So that's what it reminded me of. And, and uh, I really liked it. I installed it in uh, Firefox as an add on and on G edit. And I was impressed with it. And, and yeah, like, like you, Ven, I love that website because it <laughs> lists everything. I had no idea that theme was available <laughs> for all those programs. That's in a lot of places, man. <laughs> Speaking of Twitter, I got an invite. You, you, you at least know about TweetDeck, right? Oh yeah. yeah, I use it every day. I say tweet deck to people. I'm like, what? What be this? Like, it, it, it's, <laughs> it's a sensible way to use Twitter. Uh, for, yeah, you know, story, news, data gathering. I got invited to the new tweet deck beta, and I uninvited oh. myself from it very quickly. Not that it was. <laughs> it, it's more of the same, but with more stuff, you get more options for like your spacing and uh, like image previews and stuff like that. I'm like, I, I made it work. You know, I played around with it for about 10 minutes and get everything set up because that will eventually yeah. be your future despite any protest, you know, hashtag thumbs down, right? Yeah. And I was mm-hmm. letting it run and I 
kind of messed up. I was getting everything cut on it here. I'm like, why is one of my cores like turboing on this thread ripper? You know, it never does this. This thing runs in um, on demand mode, which means it's normally like two gigahertz, 2.1 gigahertz. They're like 3.9, 4.1. Like, what's going on? I cracked open HTOP. Just sitting there wow. in Vivaldi, it was uh, doing between 39 and 70% on one core. Like, like Oh, no. wow. Okay. <laughs> so, so if you're on a laptop. It's not memory. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's not CPU efficient. It's, it's, it's doing yeah. something. I'm, uh, dial back whatever data collection you got going on on that there. Whatever you got, man. Uh, it's not going to be my thing. Video trimmer. Hmm. Uh, yeah. So I don't think we've ever talked about this on LWW, at least since I've been doing the show. God, can you imagine, Ven? It's getting closer to four years. I can't wow. count that. Okay. High, so no. Yeah. yeah. So, so um, if you, you know, just need a quick and easy way to cut your videos for YouTube or for presentations, then Video Trimmer is a great app for you. And you don't have to to learn how to use a, a complex video um, editing app like Kden Live. But Video Trimmer 0 0.7.0 is out and it has some very, very nice updates. Uh, there is a new checkbox for accurate trimming with re-encoding to the output file selection dialog. And this, this helps with more frame perfect out output so you don't get little glitches. And... Uh, it also has a better look and feel. It's um, GTK based, and and now it matches the GNOME Edwada theme a lot better. And even better than that, it now defaults to a dark mode. <laughs> Yay! So I was happy about this update, so I had to throw it in the notes. <laughs> really nice. <laughs> hmm. I so I am so far <laughs> removed from. <laughs> Oh, all, well, the simple editors. Yeah, the only yeah. thing you, I'm trying to imagine this lifestyle of like, oh, all I have to do is chop the ends off. Oh, great. Um, yeah, no, that's really I know. good to see. I that's know. really good to see. Um, <laughs> but, 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 but maybe, just maybe, mm -hmm. you want a long and complex way to trim the yes. ends off your video. Um, well, <laughs> I'm just joking around, but there is a new version of Katie and Live. 2112 and you know a couple of things in this release a couple of things in this release man that's a mice type isn't it Maybe. yeah it's tight i had to zoom in really that's far a, so i could read that and it's it's gray <laughs> font it, it's got some things going people don't do, do <laughs> don't mess with scrolling don't mess with just come on <laughs> give us the in information that's what i'm looking for so a couple of things in this i downloaded it i played around with it uh, one of the things is the slip feature, if you've ever needed to um, mm -hmm. align clips with a quickness without doing the chop and slice, you got to snick something in, get it aligned. That's good to see. Multicam mm -hmm. editing is now a thing. Fortunately, I've not made any like terrible life mistakes to ever have to deal with that, but I know it's a good thing that it is there. Motion tracking. Now, this yeah. is with the D A S I A M R P N tracker. Now, there's been motion tracking in KDN Live before. There's a couple of other different ways to do it, but this is using this new tracking algorithm. It relies on the deep learning models, extremely accurate awesome. results. And I downloaded the models and I put them in the directory and I started up with the app image. <laughs> it kind of found Jordan. There's Jordan. <laughs> Did it find him? Ah. Yeah, well, it's not quite. He's his face isn't quite centered, but not quite. But at I least mean, it's in the general area. Yeah, considering I was using a square <laughs> instead of like an oval that I <laughs> normally use with a face, it, it, it had the general idea. It was in the, uh, it was definitely within the Jordiverse. So yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm going to say good job on that uh, object obscure. That's a couple of new things in that. You got pixelate mm -hmm. and opaque. If you're wondering about that, uh, where do we have? You know, if you're just trying to cover some faces up or, you know, yeah. maybe you've lived your entire life and you're like, man, I really wish I could be a bright green rectangle. Dreams come true. <laughs> yes. You can make it happen. I didn't realize that was a video. There we go. So, yeah, you, you can hide behind yeah. squares, possibly <laughs> other shapes and multiple For that ultimate security. <laughs> man. 
And this was something that I was really um, excited about is uh, you can now create multiple project bins from folders. And this is really a great feature for organization. And uh, I, I use this feature all the time on the likes of uh, DaVinci and, um, you know, Premiere. So th- it, I'm really happy that they've added that to Caden Live. <laughs> It's pretty it's really decent nice. and like motion tracking, face tracking, all that stuff is straight up Scandinavian witchcraft. I um, have some experience with it on DaVinci because it uses their <laughs> neural AI engine to like, yes. And when it works, you want to call people and be like, come here and look at what this thing's doing. Look at it. It's awesome. And when it doesn't, <laughs> it's bad. It, yeah, <laughs> it's like it squirrels out, and it's and there's nothing you can do. We're like, no, come over, and you're nudging it, trying to teach it, and it's like, no, this thing's more interesting than fingers will throw it up. Uh, I ran into yeah. that, so that's good to see. Always good to see more improvements in yeah. KVM Live. Now, this, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, I before we even talk about this, <laughs> I, I had to think. I was like, should I buy some of this stuff? to do a video like i don't know if i could deal with it oh oh okay so no i i like i like razor products <laughs> i don't have a so, problem with razor oh. products <laughs> it's blinking you, products you don't like rgbs i know they're rainbow vomit or or the clickies yes that that's why my uh <laughs> razor black widow uh, Chroma is not here on my desk for when I broadcast. So in case I need to use a key- keyboard during our, our broadcast, I'm not going to drive Ven up the wall with the clickies. <laughs> I got so. mute buttons. I got mute buttons. Bring it. Can... Yeah. <laughs> Jill's being awfully quiet. See, the yes. danger is that the danger with having mute buttons is sometimes you forget and somebody wants to be on about something. Oops. <laughs> So speaking of which, we're talking about Open Razor version 3.2.0. It, it, it's out and it has uh, much more Razor RGB hardware support and lots of bug fi- fixes for Linux. And it, it, it now supports the Razor Blade 14 laptop released in 2021, the Razor Blade Pro 17 laptop released early 2020, the Razor Blade 17 Pro laptop released mid-2021, the Razer Black Widow V3 keyboard, full-size keyboard, and the Razer Death Adder Essential 2021 mouse. Very popular devices that Linux users like to buy and want to get their RGB Linux working users with were all better the things. Than this. <laughs> we can strive to achieve yes. a non-blinky well, life. What's, the non-blinky life, life. Well, what's really nice is it now supports also the Razer Blade, uh, the Razer Black Widow V3 Mini Hyperspeed 65% wireless keyboard that I have been wanting to, wanting to buy and I have in my Amazon wish list. <laughs> so I've been wanting that that little 65% keyboard because I love the Razer keys. They're they have such a ni- nice feel to them. So and and their RGB is spectacular. <laughs> Ven doesn't like either of those. No, functions. no, I'm just trying to think how I can visually represent an asterisk. <laughs> visually, spectacular. Yeah. Uh, nothing against that. Now, when I think about Razer, I think like a lot of people. I'm thinking about their gerbils, their desktop gerbils, and um, yeah, mm-hmm. I went looking around. Nay, nay, just looking at the Open Razer website, we're talking about keyboards. That's thing. Okay. Pretty much all of keyboards, them. Keyboards, like, laptops. My, fr- yeah. <laughs> my first thought was like, calm <laughs> down. Jeez, how many keyboards are mice? Yeah. Lots Look at all mice. those Mises. Yeah. All those, all the, all that rodentia. <laughs> Blinking gerbils is not enough. Yes. I need my pad to blink mm. too. Oh, the Firefly is great. I have that. I have that mouse pad. <laughs> and then of course, you need your ears to blink in sync. Yes. <laughs> Headsets. We're talking about that. And there's miscellaneous devices because why not? What's the craziest one in here? Uh, for uh, nothing too crazy. The bungee. You can get a razor mouse bungee so that you're. Oh, F you're... That, man. Uh, look at this. I, I can get a blinking <laughs> mug holder. What is a mug there holder? There you go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I didn't notice that. <laughs> 
packages cool. are available <laughs> for pretty much anything Debian based, uh, Fedora, um, Next OS, Solus, mm-hmm. Void, Red Hat, and uh, no love, white, no arches in there. I was about to say, man. So, yeah. to say, this is really good to see this stuff because, you absolutely. Know, and it's not necessarily a good thing. I just do it for the human. Just for the joke, I'm like kids these days with their blinky things. Man, back in my day, children, get off my lawn. We were installing cold cathode tubes in our cases, right? High oh, voltage, yes. get electric yes. and stuff, you know, because uh-huh. we had neon lights. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, this is just an easier way to do it. And your peripherals, you might want them to blink. And that's decent. And something like this, mm-hmm. maybe, uh, maybe I'll get a mouse or something just so I could do a little video to have like, and this is the easy way to do it. And um, I, Yeah, definitely. Mm. So you can rock it like your our Windows brethren, <laughs> so we can have our RG get our RGB on on Linux, a rainbow vomit. <laughs> My entire video is going to be covering how to cut it off. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That'll be your next video, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> like, did you buy a razor product? Does it blink? I have the solution for you. No more duct tape. We'll take that off and we'll just disable it. Um, <laughs> you know, like fortunately. Even your motherboards, like the MSI motherboards have built in light. Threadripper motherboards have lighting because, man, remember, they really tried to make all these as gaming uh, systems because they didn't know what they were doing. And um, but there's an MSI tool where I can disable the RGB stuff in this board. Fortunately, it's mm. just like white lights and like, ah, I don't look at oh, it. Oh, uh, OK. Yeah. But I mean, if it looked like yeah. a, a methamphetamine fueled kaleidoscope of christmas cheer i would uh disable it <laughs> unplug it yeah uh, i'd be cutting traces is what i would do but it would be easier if there was some software much like open razor that uh we could play around with but yeah <laughs> one last thing this is a victory story if you're a patron uh this video has been up for a minute and i've been talking about it in discord back and forth uh i do a series called inner facing linux i got all this stuff back mm-hmm. here it's getting bad, Jill. It's getting bad. Um, <laughs> like I, you've got lots of videos now. Wow, it's, it's not even the videos. I'm talking about the hardware. Oh, it, we're okay. starting to get to the point. Where I'm like, I got to buy another rack to keep the stuff in. And the reason I have to keep the stuff in is because we're running situations with the guy helping me do this. He's like, Hey, man, can you test X, Y, Z? I'm like, Yeah, let me go get it. <laughs> and um, we're talking about audio interfaces because at at, at my core, I'm a hippie. And I think about the environment on Tuesdays after 6 p.m. But uh, there's a bunch mm-hmm. of really good audio interfaces. People looking to make music, people looking to get into streaming and all this fun stuff that are incredibly cheap. And they're so much better than your Focusrite wow. Scarlet that is $100. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and the reason I started this entire series is I... So Firewire device, I'm like, I wonder if you can get Firewire devices under Linux. That'll be a fun, you know, retro video. We'll play around with it and get a PCIe Firewire card. And I bought this thing called the DigiDesign from Avid, the 003R, because I found one for 100 bucks. And I found a website, and Zam Audio. I was like, hey, man, back in 2013, I reverse engineered the drivers for it, and it's great. I'm like, okay, 100 bucks. We This to be a fun little video, and I get it. It's a brick, kids. It's a brick. Now, that's what I didn't realize. Let's take, let's take a little size comparison. That's my little focus, right? <laughs> and it's nice, you know, bite size. You could probably eat it. You wouldn't be too full. <laughs> this, oh boy. <laughs> this That's is awesome. a one U system. You know, eight and it's got the digital out for light pipes and all that fun stuff. Reasonable. Si- then there's this. That that's what we're taking. Away. <laughs> <laughs> so wow. you know, yeah, the other ones you could probably fit on your desk, but this, if you have this on your desk, uh, you might as well put a monitor on it and pretend you're computing in the nineties. It's really the best I can say to that. It works now. <laughs> Initially it didn't because way back when 2019 in the before times, even the, you know, the reverse engineering site and I'm like, okay, that's great. I set it up. I try to use it to record and it's like that clicks and pops. I go back to the site and I'm like, Hey, Zam, I uh, clicks and pops. I'm like, yeah, it's known problem. Never mentioned it anywhere, but yeah, by the way, like, we need to do something about this documentation for audio devices. Under, that's the origin story of the interfacing Linux series. Then it was my attempt to um, call it a fool's errand, but somebody's got to do it, right? 
get yeah, this stuff properly absolutely. documented. And um, just been doing it out of pocket when I got some spare change laying around. This now works. This has come full circle. This got me introduced to TAC. He's one of the also developers. And he was able in May of this year to implement clock recovery for this device and get together. And I was like, hey, yep, I still got it and plug it in. Moral of the story, despite the size of this, this is an absolute win. I, I love it when a project comes to the end and everything's in one piece and setting this up relatively straightforward. If you're looking for like high end, we're not talking nothing against focus, focus right stuff. This is a whole different category of audio interface and um, also mixer works, pulse audio. You know, you could theoretically use this as a sound card if you needed it. Latency is pretty decent. I liked it and you can get one for about a hundred bucks. But as I pointed out in the video, these are not retro gaming consoles. So the front faceplate is mm. just pristine white. Oh, okay. They do not require <laughs> retro brighting because when these yeah. things were released, they were 1200 pounds cash. They, these wow. were not cheap devices. Well, then again, it was Digidesign Avid. We're like, yeah that, yeah, that sounds about right for them. Um, they don't yellow over time. So if you see one and you're thinking about getting one and it's yellowed, it's going to smell like an ashtray. You probably want to avoid it. Oh yeah. That's your little pro tip on that. But I don't know what mm -hmm. I got up next. Oh, there is another, the French interface I was playing with, uh, the sound card that's on the site, mm -hmm. linuxgamecast.com. That that's a fail. That doesn't work, despite what the Ulsa Matrix says. I went so far back, I was playing with OSS emulation. Just just trying oh, to wow. get trying to squeeze something out. <laughs> like, come on. Yeah, say, to get it to recognize. <laughs> I could get it to make a couple of sounds, but nothing. It, it's not a usable piece of kit. So unfortunately, those are showing up on eBay now because for whatever reason, those are just gonna go away. But yeah, PCIe Firewire cards. Grab one if you're looking to get into music production, streaming like that, because these interface, I will fight anybody on this, man. The industry, mm -hmm. especially on the high end, figured out AD conversion around 2003, 2004. Everything else after that, that feature sets. Fight me. Oh, Send me some emails. Nice. <laughs> uh, My uh, DigiDesign inbox to Mini is running beautifully. My USB mm -hmm. interface that that Ven did a video on. So go and watch that. It was only $20 on eBay. And that was on the high side, that's, man. Yeah. And that was high. <laughs> that's, that's like the brilliant thing about it. And not, it's not just so much as just saying, let's find out if they work or not. It's finding some good value deals. Cause I'm huge yeah. fan of value stuff. Oh, um, <laughs> go check them out. If that is interesting to you, I think up next, I'm kind of, there's like two things I want to get. But one, it's going to cost more than, here's kind of the catch. <laughs> I don't want to spend a lot of money on something just for a video. I'd never want to get into the point where I'm thinking about buying something just to get a video out of it. Does that make any sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Yeah, absolutely. Like that'd make a fun video, yeah. but it would be very useless to a lot of people. But the other thing, yeah. like, that would probably be more useful and just not as entertaining. We will find out hey if you want to help out doing that you mm -hmm. become a patron uh like the lovely party people we got a couple of levels a couple of rewards you know sure do dance for our cash <laughs> death notes sea monkeys sea monkeys we got sea monkeys <laughs> no <laughs> tell me about this what have you done <laughs> no, no, i leave you no alone for monkeys. five minutes and we got sea monkeys <laughs> no, no. No, but we do have chairlings and we do have sea monsters. <laughs> sea monkeys. That's what I it meant was to say. about that time I realized this sea monkey was 20 story tall. Um, <laughs> do we have some new sea monkeys to thank this week, Joe? Yes, we do. We have uh, Zinthyrus Gaming, who's a new patron. Thank you so much. And Axelmo, which is, who's a new patron. And Axelmo, I've been talking to in chat, so... It, it's been nice having you and thank you so much chat we have a chat and where's that at what do you want? Uh, discord oh yeah okay. <laughs> or irc <laughs> at irc we got twitch or twitch we got chat bot um which yeah. ties in for our live shows if you're on irc or on twitch discord they're all tied together we do have a 
Discord for patrons or Twitch subs if you want to hop in that. And that's where we're at the other six days a week. And I was watching yesterday as a Strider was resurrecting a Shatbot, making it, bringing it back <laughs> uh, yeah. to um, Yeah, they, they had Shat Ops going on. That was kind of interesting. But <laughs> we got Amazon wish list, tis the season, whatever. I got a list for the studio. That's how you end up with a being displayed on this back here. But more importantly, Jill requires things that blink and have fur. So she's got a wish <laughs> yeah. list. If you send her something on Aww. that, you uh, get to send a note and whoever gets note has to read it. So watch out, Steve, yeah. if you accidentally open the package and uh, that means you have to take <laughs> off work and come on the show and read the note yourself. There we go. That would be, <laughs> be great. Steve husband can send me the, the glow in a dark <laughs> penguin that I want. <laughs> <laughs> and then read the note <laughs> it's a victimless crime so <laughs> holiday pie yeah oh look at that that looks like kind of like generic <laughs> m&ms <laughs> it doesn't have an m&m label on it I know, but I know. that looks like a brownie that it, looks like a brownie it looks like yeah, somebody like, like force fed and... a care bear some m&ms and nutella and detonated it <laughs> <laughs> that looks like the pie version of rainbow vomit rgb <laughs> dead serious that is probably more processed sugar than i've ever consumed in my entire life <laughs> yeah. i would, I would take the pepsi challenge on that but it is time for that slice of pie we get to talk about something mm-hmm. that i have that i'm still waiting for some things to get sorted out because i the extent of testing i've done for my pie zero two dump you was hey it boots Put it back in the box, mm-hmm. which is a crime, which is a crime because there's so many wonderful <laughs> things that you can do with a Raspberry Pi Zero W2. That right. Yeah. That's right. What are we talking about? It sure does. Wi-Pi. <laughs> it's got the Wi-Fi for your Wi-Fi, but somebody wasn't happy with that. They're like, we can do better. We can go further. And you know where this is going. We're going to put an external antenna yeah. on it. I'm like, all right, that's fine. <laughs> and, you know, please note this modification is done at your own risk. And we'll about blah, blah, blah. Come on, it's a pie. I don't even remember what these were, like 15, 20 bucks, something like that. Just buy another one. Try again. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Pretty straightforward. You know, for a few bucks and a couple of pokes with a hot stick, you can get the Pi Zero W2. Just a little bit of a boost. I mean, this isn't, yeah. you know, you're not going to be picking this up from like the next state all of a sudden but it isn't yeah there's some number digits down here I was like, yeah know, about nine ten db boost and a bunch of them yeah it's it's pretty nice i mean i was actually really Im- impressed because it 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 said that the pi zero two could detect 14 wi-fi networks in in their testing with an external antenna but only four without it so that that proves right there that that works really well and, um, you know, even in my house, I always put antennas, Wi-Fi antennas on uh, all my adapters in the house. I'm going to quit watching this because I'm going to be snarky and talk. I am, no, I'm not going to comment on other people's <laughs> soldering because I know mine's not great. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I want to be that person on the internet. Like, like just shut up. Uh, that, that was directed towards me. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it's got a boost to it, but. It made me think, you know, we got like these $15 little devices that we could hook up with like an 18650 LiPo battery and go around with a little screen. How far removed are we, Jill, from the days yeah. of pre-smartphones? It was a darker time, kids. Being oh, out yeah. war driving in a car with a laptop, just picking up these novel new things that we could called access points. Yes. Remember the wire shark, all the things? I I remember driving around <laughs> in the passenger seat going, oh, and just thinking about yeah. it. Like, we were bored. It was a dark yeah. time, but now we get something Always like trying to <laughs> trying to get on your neighbor's Wi-Fi. <laughs> that was just the Just seeing how many points we could hit. Uh, just yeah. reading about people doing it with satellite dishes, like setting up these antennas. All, all the fun, fun stuff. Cantanas. It, yeah, like any new technology <laughs> at the time, you know, it was uphill both ways in the snow, but it was still fun to play around with. And now we got something like this 15 box and put a little external antenna on it and just have some fun. Yeah. Which is pretty neat. 
which is pretty. It's neat. awesome. I just wish it had five Gs. Oh, <laughs> this is I'm what sure I'm, there's an adapter for that for the Pi. I need some help because <laughs> we're about to talk about the email section for our track media team that we're going to be doing on Fridays. I want to call it the five Gs, but I can't find a good. Um, oh, I, I got like grandparents, grandpas uh, get good, but I can't work my way up to five Gs. So help me out. Send in some feedback (laughs) for our old person racing uh, Friday afternoons that we're going to be doing. But if you want to get in touch with us, head over to LinuxTeamCast.com. We have a contact button. We've got a drop down menu. Pick the right show. This one you might see if you're watching the video. LWDW Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays. Make sure that's selected. Fill it out. Give us an email. Give us a topic. And it might, just might, Mm -hmm. end up right here on this very show. show. (laughs) <laughs> like Earl's did. Okay, so the email from Earl states, as you all know, I've been unhappy with the quality of Linux and bounce around between Windows and Mac OS X and Ubuntu lately. I was wondering what you guys think about Fedora Silverblue or other immutable boot distros a la SteamOS Next. I think package managers aren't that great, and I'd rather duplicate some or all libraries and take a hit to space than have to worry about library compatibility and versioning issues. From Earl. Oh, thank you, Earl. Yeah. Um, I think you can flat pack all the things. Um, honestly, Fedora Silverblue is is pretty great. I know a lot of people who, who use it exclusively. <laughs> so I don't think that's out of the you know, realm of, uh, you know, having a distro, you would, you wouldn't, you would enjoy. So horrible idea. Sounds good I would to never me. recommend doing anything <laughs> like that. Simply, because- <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I knew you would say that, Ben. <laughs> we, me and Ven like to install our packages natively. So I, I, I try not to use flat packs. I'm just or violently snap against containerization I'm... on the desktop yeah. <laughs> in general, on principle. Yeah. Um, here's the but thing. it is nice for updates. It's easy to update. <laughs> I, I have an issue recommending anything, even Fedora's like, this is experimental. So, yeah, true. That's <laughs> it's not going to be your ideal. Ex- uh, I had a very surprisingly popular comment on our Linux. Somebody was asking, like, hey, man, hmm. fellow distro hoppers, how do I, you know, when when would you, when do you find the thing and how do you get settled down and what choices do you make and what should I pick? And I wrote him back. This, like, surprised me because my inbox, I'm like, what happened this time? Because last time my inbox blew up, I was on a lie detective video. And mm. I, I saw, <laughs> it had like two, three hundred up. Updates, and I just wrote back. I'm like, listen, let me let me tell you. This is how you know that you found your perfect Linux distribution. It's as simple as this. Once Linux becomes your operating system and not your hobby, that's when you're going to yeah. settle down and find the right Linux for you. Until that point, absolutely. Don't spin your wheels worrying about which one should I think about choosing. You'll find the right distribution and give it its forever home. And it might be silver blue. It might not be. Probably won't be CentOS um, because it's CentStream now. Uh, Yeah, Fedora 35 using DNF is beautiful. I've been running Fedora, so that's 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 easy easy to use. mm -hmm. And um, but yeah, like Ven was saying, you just kind of pick a distro and and learn it. Learn it really well, it and then later that, think about... Well, it's got to become your yeah. operating system. Linux has to become your operating system yeah. before anything... You, that, that's just how that works. you got to bite that bullet. But that that's like a you choice. That's not any... No one else can tell yeah. you about that. That's That's got to click up here and be like, hey, man, yeah, I just want to run this. This is going to be the operating system I'm going to use. You know, and I made yeah. that choice like 30 years ago. Uh, but so it's weird. Like, don't listen to anything I'm saying. I'm talking to you from the past. <laughs> Yeah. But that's yeah. how I feel about things. Like, I'm going to try this. The idea of switching up, even distributions. Now, I'm still the person that has the home partition because I'm that. I'm like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I do too. And that gets yeah. backed up more than anything <laughs> else. Or like switching to a different operating system for the funsies, out of the question at this point in my life. Not going to happen. Um, but I don't know. Fedora Silver Blue sounds like. I mean, it would be 
maybe I'm seeing this the right way. It'd be very difficult to break it. Yeah. I think you'd have to get particularly yeah. creative. I don't know. Definitely. Definitely. I mean, I, I, I have ran it um, and never had a problem with it, with the flat packs, even in, you know, beta. So it's still very sa- stable. Go for it. Report. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Let us know. But we got to get out of here. We still managed to run yeah. long because we talk too much. That's our problem. Don't worry about <laughs> it. Roll some credits and uh, we'll see you next week. Maybe I won't cut the yeah. audio off again because I pressed the wrong button. Maybe yeah. I will. <laughs> Oh, that's what happened. Dude. <laughs> now Aww. we got credits. We love all our pa- patrons. Here's our credits. So See, it's not pressing ben. the wrong button, kids. It's finding out and which Jill. button you pressed. <laughs> and our advisors, Omegas and our Theron, thank you so much. We love you. And our executive producers, Aldius, Barbrandt, Scott M, and Fox Dog, Atomic Ass, Mike G. Nope, didn't quite make it. Chicago's kicks at kick kicks. Huh? <laughs> Chicago kicks. We're spitting oh, mad no. fire tonight, aren't we, sister? No, no, no. I'm, I'm uh, summoning my inner Pedro. <laughs> mm. Ladies and gentlemen, Aww. we'll see you next week. Right. Bye, bye, everyone. Love you. 